Lovely to have you here. Nice Thank to see Thank you, you for having me. This is fun. Oh, absolutely. A pleasure. Um, well, it's supposed to be fun. <laughs> yes. Let's see. Watch this space. Um, how would I describe you? We've got um, someone who is a choreographer, creator, performer, ex-performer. Interesting, actually, to hear what you, what you, how, how you, where you place me. Yeah, um, I guess you're someone who wears many hats. Is that correct? Yeah, I would say so. Not um, today, but not today. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I, I see you as someone who's, yeah, incredibly involved in their work from conception to its end result and everything in between. How would you describe yourself? First and foremost, I, I would identify myself as an artist. I mean, that's already a big word, um, but I do make my own work um, in choreography, dance with my company. And um, yes, I was a former dancer um, for my whole life. Um, but I am also a director of a cultural organization. I'm also a producer. I'm also a dance activist. I'm also a um, outside eye and coach and mentor uh, for artists and other people. I am a teacher. I am a husband. I am a cat owner and duck owner. Um, <laughs> so yeah, and all those things kind of merge together all the time. Wonderful. Sounds like you're definitely very busy all the time. <laughs> Who isn't? Yeah. I'm not special. Yeah, I think it's a product of our times at the moment. I feel like um, you have to do so many things. It's not just defined by one role or we're required, I guess, to to play many, many parts and yeah. to... Busyness is the new black. Yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> it, yeah I, I wouldn't specialize or place into a kind of pedestal the idea of like doing many things because I feel like at this point in... The reality is, it doesn't matter what you do, you take on many roles. And it's, uh, I think, <laughs> life ends up being the balance of all of those, like the, the process of balancing all of those roles and those things, whether it's personal, professional. Mm. Yeah. Have you learned some skills in the past or, <laughs> or in, in the I wish, recently to, I to balance wish. this? Um, yeah, I could definitely say I've learned a lot over the years um, trying to um, juggle uh, different responsibilities, different positions and roles. Um, I feel like right now I'm very busy with learning how to um, be a team player and in combination with still leading. So even though I'm leading a team, leading an organization, leading a, a group of artists, how do I place myself in as a lead, the leader being just one role in that team rather than uh, taking on authority? How can I sort of, uh, how can my role as, as a director or uh, whether it's my administrative team, production team, art, artistic team, I'm always finding myself sort of one of many people who are trying and we're all trying to bring this thing together whatever this thing might be um and i feel like in the past the attitude has been um traditionally hierarchical where a, a director or leader just kind of says this is what i want and go do it yeah. um and i've recently over the last few years with interactions tried to explore the position of what if I don't know what I want? Um, can that be okay? And can we all collectively help figure that out? And how can I help direct people to their strengths so that we collectively get this together? Yeah. And that's been very interesting. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, I think I witnessed that in your work previously when we collaborated on the Recover film. Yeah, and it's I, about time. It's about time. And I really saw that you were, yeah, a great team player and someone who really uh, took on this collaborative approach to, to get to an end goal. Is that something you also adopted for your latest work? A little bit differently. Um, I think that my, 
I think the the work you're talking about is called Recover, and you made the film, the documentary film, It's About Time. So that was kind of your insight into that process. Um, but Recover was a really um, transitional work, I think, for, for me, and kind of transformed the way I wanted, like from the way I was working to the way I wished to work. Um, and I was very lucky um, and uh, grateful, privileged to be able to work with the dancers that I worked with for that production because we kind of dove into a questioning like how can art be life and life be art and how can um, how can we get essentially better uh, mm -hmm. but at ourselves at, at doing work at growing mm -hmm. um this is all very blah blah every time i talk about recover it mm -hmm. becomes this like we sound like some sort of cult in the in the in the forest okay. um doing some sort of ceremonies of, of therapy but it really isn't um and this was also part of the process it was about going into trauma and dealing with past trauma yeah and yeah so actually i've been uh, yeah the last three productions i did um with the company was a trilogy on the experiences of trauma from um, the moment of um, experiencing a traumatic event to how we cope and deal with it, which was recovered, the piece I'm talking about, and then questioning how inter or cross-generational trauma is existing within us on a daily basis from our ancestors and where do we stand in the pathway of um, the pa past experiences and how we are influencing future experiences. So um, I've been very, it's been very meta and I've been very busy with that for the last years, which um, was very heavy, I can very valuable, very mm -hmm. valuable, but extremely heavy and um, like a lot of facing truths um, and learning to, for me to keep cope with shame and with, um, with confrontation and struggle and um and actually like celebrating that and giving it a platform to say like that is the most human thing i have um right. and we have and how can that take on the most powerful resource and source for inspiration for creativity for art to share yeah. and therefore overcome it um sounds like it was a healing process yeah absolutely oh my gosh absolutely yeah yeah it was very for me extremely healing um the whole trilogy was was basically therapy <laughs> through work um for me personally exercise but also, your demons uh, <laughs> yeah and for also all of the the team uh yeah. the people involved I, and again i was extremely grateful and uh for them being so gracious uh to to go on that kind of demanding journey right. um, as work yeah. yeah as a job um, which was very very interesting yeah. but that led me to want to do something totally different right after okay, I was yeah. going to ask <laughs> yeah, if this exactly. was a, a, depart a conscious departure of sorts yeah. to, to work on your latest production Grit yeah is um, maybe it's better for you to describe it it's very it's a rollicking good time it's it's bright and it's pink and it's it's um, a lot of pink yeah um yeah, so I think coming out of this uh, uh, trilogy on on uh, the experiences of trauma um, in the body, I kind of I, I went into a little um, dark place where I during the pandemic where I was asking myself I was I was spending so much time on all of the sorry to say this but all the shit yeah. um, and. In there, I asked myself, like, okay, where can I meet pleasure? Mm -hmm. where, where, with it, with that, not only, like, d diving only into the shit, but, like, recognizing that there's a lot of shit there. How can I find pleasure, joy, uh, moments of, 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 of happiness or, or anything uplifting? Um, but also physically, like, mm -hmm. how can I connect with pleasure and joy in my body? body again how can i enter a studio and dance and smile at the end um 
of that and feel like that was encouraging, uplifting, uh, being mm-hmm. a positive influence on me rather than a, a, as I was experiencing it, like a deep dive into the unknown of darkness, yeah. you know? Um, so I, I, I just went on this exploration. I was like, okay, how do I, how do I enjoy dance? And yeah. as a 41 year old person who has not danced professionally in more than 10 years like or trained professionally more than 10 years how do i meet my body again with pleasure okay. or this new body exploration it you. was a totally a personal okay. exploration this new body how can i meet it and ex- instead of like um uh challenge it or, or or get all depressed because it cannot do what i've always been able to yeah. do how can I actually meet it like and date it again, date my body yeah. and say like, okay, wh- where is it funny? Where yeah. is it? Um, uh, I celebrate it. In where, way, yeah. Right? How do we have a good time? Okay. Um, and it was not easy at the beginning. Um, also, I think because the pandemic was very lonely for everyone. But essentially, I kind of went back to a root of mine and I said like what did I start with where how did I enter into dance and I entered into dance through street urban dance um I entered into dance through pop culture okay. um and and eventually somehow one thing led led to the other and I found myself doing aerobics again um and I say again because I've I, I did it even as a like as a job, I was when I was 18 years old, just for a side job, I was teaching aerobics to to okay. old housewives. Um, in, in uh, yeah, because at the time I thought anybody could do that, right? Um, but I found myself doing aerobics again, and specifically uh, step aerobics. So step aerobics is a a, a practice that. Um, it's of course uh, highly rhythmical, um, and the choreography gets developed through a class, a session of an hour. So it's a it's a cardio workout, yeah. uh, like any aerobics. But it is also like mentally extremely challenging because the choreography gets adapted as you move along and gets more complicated, and more complicated, and more complicated, um, to the point where you are now going up and down this and around this step thing. Um, mm-hmm. And it stimulates your mind, your body, your conditioning, your, and it's super fun. So you found the, you found the fun again. I found, found pleasure there. Found I pleasure. found, yeah, I found like a kind of joy in, in dancing, mm-hmm. Dan- but not dancing like just like at a party, but dancing where I have to think of the steps and the choreography mm-hmm. and the, and. It's not um, always a direction people sort of head towards when making it work. I mean, as you see from your last trilogy, when you were going into the depths of our, you know, internal traumas and yeah. and to go towards something positive and fun. But I found it equally important. That's yeah. why I think that was that was what for me maybe was a bit more missing in the trilogy where like, how do we part of of going through emotional, psychological processes is also like celebrating. Yeah. It's, ce- it's celebrating something. Um and I think we didn't spend enough time on that in the trilogy. And I think, okay. if anything, maybe Grit was kind of my, my interest to go there. I mean, it wasn't called Grit at the beginning. Um, okay. Once I found step aerobics and I started practicing it a lot, I went to, I decided to take classes. Okay. And I was like, there's something interesting here. So I, I went to um, a, a, like a fitness empire in my region called Fitz and Maya, which is um, a series of, of gyms um, inside uh, or fitness studios um, in my region, in the Rheinecke region. And I went to do a step aerobics class there. Um, and I, I made a, a membership to the gym and I decided this is my thing. Okay. I'm going to come here three, four times a week. So something really, um, some new chapter. And I'm going to enter or... this. And as I was there, I I found a community. I found a community of people who use this activity as a form of escape from their lives, their daily lives, or as a means to an end, or um, 
as just to, to, to do something fun with their friends or to challenge themselves physically and or whatever it is or some of them say they, they like to dance and they don't like to like partying is one kind of dance but this is another kind of dance mm -hmm. and, and others are there to like build muscles and all kinds of different yeah. different um, Sorry. all kinds of different reasons they were doing it and I got really inspired by this this community okay. this group of people And I fig found myself like, wow, this is, they found their fun. Mm -hmm. they, they found something that they could really separate from their daily lives and just like dedicate themselves physically to pleasure for, in their own way, whatever pleasure yeah. meant for them, um, for just that one hour. Some people find it in yoga. Some people do it in meditation. Some people do it in uh, uh, creating um, ceramics or whatever. There's many ways of reading, but for me, this felt like something that could teach me something. Right. Um, and so I did. I I stepped for about a year. Um, okay. And I myself and I met this community. They became friends, and then we st I started talking a bit deeper into what is this 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 medium this that's happening here of this one hour session guided by this person that is also a party, also a workout, also a challenge, also a, um, a shot of coffee to the mm -hmm. body uh, in that sense. But inside this structure in the system of a fitness studio, a gym. So I was paying money to this empire, this, this gym empire, in order to have my one hour of See. fun. And something felt weird about that. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the people who were doing the, the step aerobics, they were also saying, well, this is kind of the only place where there's such high level. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and then I was, I decided, okay, I'm gonna actually spend a bit more time in the gym. Okay. And like, observe and experience what this environment really is and th suddenly mm. this like this outside uh, eagle eye view of this place became this like okay this is a bunch of people paying money to work hard yeah, and <laughs> it's, there's a, it's an empire of franchise profiting off this profiting this off of people's or... efforts right off of their work now Uh, it's understandable that they have their reasons for being there, whether they want to, uh, you know, um, for honest health purposes, because that's that's a, a way to get better or physiotherapy, mm -hmm. doing machines or whatever. But it could also be because you want a better Instagram post or yeah, um, it can be an or, outlet or an escape, uh, an outlet or an, or also an addiction. Yeah, um, and and pump and body modification right. and and. Then it starts to get twisted. Um, and all these people are in this place together. Um, how are they influencing each other? And so on and so on. And all that became like clearly to me like a sign that there's something for me that I find interesting and that I want to research. And that ended up going into the body economy. Okay, like so how the, do we the depths come in? That's when the depth comes mm -hmm. in. Like body economy, where how do we value and place value on body, on effort? How does what is what your effort worth? Mm -hmm. And how do we measure that? And, mm -hmm. and what bodies are the ones that are celebrated are or celebrated are more valued mm -hmm. and so on and so on and why Which and is also changing over time as well of course and that brings trend in pop culture um it brings in capitalism and the role of this gym and i was like wondering who's sitting in the office probably on the third floor you know making their living and they're pro profiting off of all the people working hard downstairs Uh, and then uh, all of these questions is like, why isn't this hard work getting transformed into energy that feeds our whole ecosystem? Like, why is this not 
being used in another way, of course, I've run into that further yeah. and I've realized yeah. there's, 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 of course, it, it's not so simple, but the idea of it and just like, how would I feel if I was in that role? And then... And exhaustion being the goal, it, this is the only way to get somewhere is by extreme effort and pushing Good point. Yourself. So what is the goal? Yeah. And every single person has their own goal. That question of what is the goal, what is the purpose of all this became in a way the motivation for me to like, See. okay, I need our to use art and process creative process to dive deeper into that question. Um, and that's how grit was born. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Wow. <laughs> um, so thanks for sharing. Um, going off what you were saying about art as a tool of learning and growth from your past creations, whether it be the trauma trilogy or the latest work grit, is there something that, has helped you deal with um, the role of art today? For example, whether you consider it being a, a luxury or a necessity or both, or whether it's a, a tool of reflection or a, a tool to escape. Um, how is it for you right now, given everything that's going on? I think it's all of the above um, that you mentioned. I, I would say, I'm busy now with the question, so I'm I'm in the post stage because <laughs> I I just finished a creation, yep. we just premiered uh, this month, and I um, am now in this this space of like, what's next? I enjoy this space because it's it's the observing space. It's okay. the like okay how what's what's coming toward what's coming next? Um, I'm really inspired by the zeitgeist of what happens of the now yep. um and what's what's calling socially social pol politically yep. um the world what's uh, yeah and uh but essentially the tool like i see art making um a responsibility uh both like uh, yep. the luxury of being able to respond to something yep. but um, as well as an, a necessity and uh, something that it, it, somebody's got to do it, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, we are very privileged to be working in Germany in a country that um, recognizes uh, the importance and value of culture. It's now it's very scarily getting questioned again, yeah. um, I think politically, which is daunting to me. Um, because it has proven so strongly in the last decades um, its value uh, of, of, a, of a rich life of art and culture um, and what that does for people. Uh, and so for me, it's one of the reasons I'm, I, I'm here in Germany because I... I, I align with the, a country that recognizes this and therefore sees me as a um, as an actor as a as a participant in its own politically political social um, goals aims yep. for society I feel like by saying I'm an artist I'm taking on a role that society recognizes it needs yeah, and I think rather I than a beggar that you know wants to just do my thing yeah um i feel like you do have a responsibility or you feel this responsibility with this role on this word artist absolutely yeah. i mean it's it, just like any i i feel like i'm a civil uh, a, a civil servant I, I i work for society um and just like anybody who works in the social sphere or in political sphere or even in a city administration or yeah. whatever, they're taking on a role and responsibility for the continu continuity and betterment of society. So do artists. Um, and that's something that makes me feel at home with and in, like in peace with that role because mm -hmm. i feel the country recognizes it yeah um you are supported and you there is a, f an, a very rich funding system that recognizes importance in art of course it's it's flawed in many ways and doesn't matter 
I, I can definitely say that Germany has an incredible system uh, in place yeah. for for supporting art. And and with that being said, there's a lot of work to be done to make it better. Um, and it's not enough. Uh, but that would probably be the same for any yeah. person sitting here from whatever role they're in. Yeah. yeah. Just wait for the ambulance to pass. Ambulance. <laughs> nice yeah. timing. Um, and how how are you approaching this right now in the role of art and mm, how are you dealing right now I guess would be the <laughs> one way to summarize it I think that my, how I can deal with it so I, I try to ask myself okay with the resources I have the position I have the power I have if I have any at all um, what can I do um, should we wait again mm. yeah Hey, Dennis. Yeah. So, feel free to continue. I guess I'm just curious about art and politics and this yeah. intersection and today and. Yeah, I I think the only thing I can do is ask my or anyone can do is ask themselves what what within my resources possibilities can I do to uh for to better any kind of situation or thing that I'm involved in. Um, for me, I, I think the, the most activistic thing I have done so far has been building the space of interactions, mm -hmm. um, which is a studio space in Heidelberg. Um, and um, it has become and this this always um, touches me so much because it was not intentional, but it I have discovered that that's what we've done. Um, it has become a a safe space for people to meet, All, whether they are artists or not artists or citizens. Yeah. Uh, it's become a mm. public space for people to meet, engage with their bodies, with movement, with art, with dialogue with community so with important. diversity yeah. and that is transforming society so i think i can make as many pieces as i want yeah. and they could make a difference and influence people in a profound way no doubt and they are definitely the seed or the motivation for me to continue but what i think m the most um, profound deepening thing that I've I've managed to associate myself with and create has been the possibility for a space like that okay. um, that's been right now for me that's what I'm dealing what I'm busy with especially in all the these like really high highly dangerous political times globally um, where it's so easy to get um, sucked into it's so talking easy. points. To so easy to just get exposed and just have a quick a, des a need for a quick answer um, to something extremely complex and layered. Um, it's so important to make sure that there's still support for spaces that offer people to meet yeah. to just meet yeah. each other it's um, also a responsibility i guess for this that these cultural institutions have somewhat of an open door um, policy or access to the community it surrounds yeah i think i'm busy now act politically activistically with with trying to spread that that message um for me that's important I mean, it comes down to, at the end, talking to people who don't... Needing to talk to people who don't understand anything about what we're doing, but they mm -hmm. have the power to make those changes. And I'm talking about politicians um, and uh, people who hold the key to the doors of funding structures um, who are all... They come from a very, like, good heart, well-intentioned place. They just don't have the knowledge... Mm -hmm and the understanding of how things are actually operating on yeah. a daily basis 
in in diverse societies, mm. um, how how could they? Yeah, and how so does one go about our, that? That becomes our job. Yeah. So to me, that that's starting to become more of my job of recognizing that I need to sh- to to s- like scream out loud. Look, this is what's happening. This is valuable every day, it's, and it's important, and it's it's it's. Um, it's necessary, um, and especially through dance, because dance is a nonverbal means of connecting uh, and developing empathy. We don't need to speak the same language. We don't need to have the same um, political points of view. We don't need to agree with each other, and we can still spend time together doing something valuable, yeah, which is still, connecting. We can still translate, exactly. Yeah, and I think... What's happening now is that, like, or, or my criticism on the funding system in in Germany is that it it's placing art and creation as a answer to social problem, um, to social problems, m- m- kind of um, gently nudging it to becoming social work. I see. Where we as artists are being placed in the role of fix society and i think it's important to remind also that that was never our job (laughs) um there are social workers there are places that are doing that and are extremely necessary for doing that um we are a reflection of society so that social workers know what to to address um and i think that that's where professional art theater work or museum or galleries or any kind of platform that is mm. is sharing artists and their points of view is of va- just as equal value as is supporting spaces that help people um to do to do social growth yeah. um they come together actually and that's something that I don't want I want to kind of try to argue that should not be, be seen as separate because it's very easy for politicians mm. to say, okay, well, art can heal society, then that's all it should do. This is this category. This exactly. This. And, and, and it's not, uh, yeah, but like, okay, so if I'm working with a, a group of, of, of people uh, who are non-professional dance people, just anybody, and we are working on something and I'm using my knowledge and tools and skills from the dance from my research to with these people and it's it's change it's changing something in them uh, which is beautiful i don't know how to do that if i didn't have the work i'm researching right the, first the background behind the, it yeah, and, yeah i need to have the means to make an a piece and in that piece i'm researching something which is bringing me to recognize oh this is valuable for and then i can share that in many different ways, yeah. but essentially the funding for the piece then is necessary so to make the social work. This comes back to, I guess, your approach in general. There is a, a clear evolution from a seed of an idea, the development, um, and how it can then be implemented in different ways. My my, uh, with my mentoring or coaching work that I do for other artists is always asking, what. Y- okay, you have a mission (laughs) that you have in mind that you want to achieve. Whether that happens or not, doesn't matter. Something's going to end up happening. We're going to trust that. But you start with a mission uh, and a goal. As you go along, keep asking yourself, what more can I do with this? So it, it might be that you didn't even expect that out of your research came a really interesting Mm -hmm. exercise Mm -hmm. that you can recognize, oh, this could be valuable for people who are dealing with social anxiety. This could be valuable for the corporate industry because it works on teamwork. Right. So it's very open. Like, how is what you're busy with relevant Mm -hmm. beyond your work, your piece? And what more can you do to put that into action in, in, into the, re- the real world? Mm. Um, and that's where 
the discussion of, of, of contemporary arts becomes economical mm -hmm. because when I meet with politicians and they, they say, this piece costs this much money, what are we getting out of it? Only this many people manage to buy tickets and, uh, yeah, and end up seeing it. Exactly. And, and, I, and I go, yes, but mm -hmm. this project has birthed mm -hmm. these channels of access and work for other people because you can't exactly put a monetary value on they they spring up they spring forward other ideas absolutely uh that's a little bit what grit is about too going back to it um and and i think that that i want artists to recognize that there's more to what they are doing always and it, it's not that don't exhaust yourself and overload yourself and overwhelm yourself with doing it all uh, not at all but recognize that there are always windows and, and channels that could come out of this tree, this trunk that you've started. Exactly. I'm going to give you a, a clap for that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's really, really amazing what you said, that we don't limit ourselves and that these ideas can be born and be shared. And that's what it's about. So. Thank you very much. I've got some quick questions for you, unless you have some questions speed for us. Speed round? Let's do a speed round. <laughs> oh, um, <gosh. laughs> Dan, what's your happy place? Mm, uh, my winter garden. Lovely. No. Yeah. Do you get to go there often? Uh, coffee in the mornings. Um, and every, yeah, every so often in home office. Okay, very <laughs> yeah. nice. Um, Not enough. Not enough. Um, do you ever suffer from a creative block? And if so, what do you do about it? How do you get around it? Uh, do I ever suffer from a creative block? Yes, all the time. Um, what do I do about it? I wait. Okay. Be patient. Um, and uh, reach out to my colleagues. Okay. Lovely. I think you might have answered this one, but uh, what do you consider one of your strengths as a creator? You're saying that you're a great team player, not to put words in your mouth, but was there something uh, like that? Or I'm something working else? on that. I'm okay. still working on that, so I wouldn't say it's there. Um, you got to ask my colleagues that question, not me. Okay, very humble answer. Um, <laughs> what things do you find most challenging? As a creator or a leader? Bureaucracy. Bureaucracy, yeah. Um, I, I, I think this is the stupidest uh, uh, thing in the world. Um, it's a little bit I, over the is, top, a, let's a, be honest. A, beyond over the top. I mean, I, 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 if ever, our whole conversation we just had about all the potentials that exist inside the work, mm -hmm. we can achieve, I would, less than 50% of that only because we are occupied and our time is wasted on stupid forms. <laughs> forms, forms, forms. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. So you're right now, what are you, what are you currently inspired by? What's currently um, lighting your fire? Right now I need the flame to go down a bit. Okay. Like actually, it, right now at this moment, mm -hmm. meaning November yep. two thousand twenty-three, yep. my flame needs to be a little bit reduced okay. because I I need to re, like regroup okay. <laughs> um, right now. But uh, and that's also important to take that time. But I am going into a creative process starting next month um, on the topic of soft skills. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm very. I'm very curious about what does dance, what has dance taught us so that we use on a daily basis mm -hmm. um, that is not within the dance sector. Yep. So um, whether it's um, communication skills, yeah, multitasking, managing, multitasking, point. managing information, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm. I'm. Okay. I'm very curious about how can I capture and say, okay, this is a skill I've gained from my knowledge and experience mm -hmm. as a dance artist, yep. um, and it's useful for also that. Okay. Um, and can I draw direct lines? 
Sounds like another big topic to dive into. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. I'm going to start a new creative process uh, okay. uh, next month uh, okay. or th- in a week. All right. So um, first, I think it was also, like you said, it's important to also yeah have this downtime and process. and It's part of it. It's, it, it needs to happen, I think. It's imp- we don't super often important. value this enough, I think. That comes back to the dance activism of saying that artists also need to be paid for their time of reflection yeah. and, and, and contemplation mm. and... Um, and and the patience that requires in order to let the next thing come rather than I got to do something because yes. I need to pay my rent. Again, uh, capitalism. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Okay, so what are you listening to right now? Pop music. Pop music. Uh, what are you watching? Oh, well, actually, recently, Friends. Um, oh. because oh. Uh, because yeah. of the death of Matthew oh. Perry, um, I I was I I was I grew up uh, uh, my my yeah. my stupid American side of me grew up on on this on like a comedy series of the nineties. Yeah, I think you're not um, alone there. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and um, yes, yeah, so it's always been my kind of go to. Um, thing when I need to shut off for half an hour okay just put on an episode of friends and now I'm I, I'm back there for with a different yeah um, kind we've, of, we've yeah. lost one yeah I mean we we is in, well, <laughs> like, became a, a global I, it's okay it's just a tv show but uh <laughs> but um yeah but that's what I've been watching yeah to to shut off okay. when I had the the chance okay nice yeah. And RuPaul's Drag Race always. Okay, there we go. Um, so I'm glad to hear you're finding your happy place. And <laughs> it was super nice to talk with you. Um, is there someone you could imagine being here as well? Would you like to nominate someone to mm, sit and talk with us? What a beautiful question. Wait, I got to think about this. Um, somebody that I always, always appreciate hearing from is Monica Gillette. Mm, lovely. I don't know if you yes. are, know her. She's um, a, a yeah, dramaturg she a... and a also dance activist and facilitator and mobilizer, mediator on really beautiful, uh, with a beautiful understanding of the power of dance um, okay. based in Freiburg. Yeah. Would you like to ask her straight into this camera? <laughs> Monica, you're next. Um, and dream collaboration. Do you have someone or some group or someone you would love to work with? No limitations. Oh, whoa. Um, <laughs> Another big My one. God, so many, so many. I mean, I, I, I'm grateful working with uh, everyone, of uh, anyone I end, of up, end up working with. Um, I guess it depends on for what. Um, now we're we went in the friends theme, so I want to work with Lisa Kudrow. <laughs> great, <laughs> yep, I can see I can see that actually it would be a great combination. Um, yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciated the time you spent with us, um, sharing your thoughts, and we should do it again. I think we could do another three of these and hardly scratch the surface. Gladly. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me.